Well, all right, all right, all right. And welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean, and that over there is Brian. And back again is our best friend, Joel. Yay! Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. We're happy to have you back with us again. And guys, here we are, finally, the penultimate episode of Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 10. I'm it's so happy. called Yes. I'm my Tuesdays back. I'm Life itself. <laughs> yes. For a little while anyway, you know, who right. knows? Things change. We we are always evolving. So yeah, our days probably are gonna change. Before that, please hit that subscribe button. Please give us a like. And guys, remember it's subscription is free. It costs you nothing. Do us a favor, it helps us out a lot. And it Tremendous. really I mean, yeah, it there's no way to describe how much it helps us. It's an easy thing for you to do. And for some of you who may have been subscribed to us, check, make sure you're subscribed because YouTube has a tendency to unsubscribe people for no reason. So yeah, just double check that. Right. Anywho, finally, we're getting done with this discovery. I am so sick of this show. Yay. I am so glad it's going away and they end it in true discovery fashion with just I, I honestly, I wish Frakes would have done the final episode because the, the the last episode was better than this one. And this episode to me felt like somebody doing almost like worse than the Scarface checkout of, uh, you know, Half-Baked of like, I quit and just like trashing, <laughs> you know, wherever they're working and like flipping everything over, throwing everybody the bird on the way out and just yeah. like cussing, whatever. That's what this felt like, right? No doubt, man. I am definitely glad to see the back of it. The only thing that sucks is knowing that Tilly's going to show up one day in some Starfleet Academy show, which I still don't understand how somebody who was a cadet like four years ago can all of a sudden be teaching it at Starfleet and uh, just whatever. But yeah, I mean, this this episode, like I really wanted them to do a lot with that whole uh, the. Uh, I don't even know what you call it, that space orifice thing that they went into, right? <laughs> right. The progenitor uh, capsule. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. The, the progenitor <laughs> device. I like <laughs> space orifice. <laughs> I like I mean, the orifice better, too. Let's go. I thought, well, what, you know, what kind of world could you put in there? I mean, like, how cool could it have been? And it was just so bland. Yeah. Um, I did think it had kind of like a, almost like a Wizard of Oz feel to it at times. Like you're following the Yellow Brick Road type deal. Um, it had a very death stranding feel, uh, when she falls through and she's like under through the water kind of deal where you come through. If anybody's played death stranding, when you die, you like come through the ooze. It's like, it's like you're going through a dimension and you're up upside down earth and then it spins over and you're right side up or something. You know, it was very much in, in the vein of that. Just one, one real quick note, man, the, the, the whole thing with the fight at the beginning with her and Berm just really. That whole thing got on my nerves. I was like, really? This is unnecessary. It was unnecessarily long. Let me put it that way. I it, agree. Uh, a quick scuffle, maybe, but it just seemed like it went on way too long. It felt just, I don't know, wedged in there and off somehow. But yes, Joel, I definitely want the deets, man. You got the important <laughs> stuff. Up, so man. let's hear it. Let's Give hear us the, the skinny. The facts, the skinny, the down low. Star yeah. Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 10, Series Finale. Life itself aired May 30th, 2024, uh, trapped inside a mysterious alien portal that defies familiar rules of time, space, and gravity. Burnham must fight Mole, Maul, said that wrong, and the environment itself in order to locate the progenitor's technology and secure it for the Federation. That's the one sentence wonder for my DB yet another day. Uh, this is directed <laughs> by, um, uh, uh, and I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Sorry. Uh, o o Olatund Osin Sanmi. He directed 14 episodes of Star Trek Discovery Easy for in 2017. Yeah. More than anyone else. He is the dominant right. director of this series. Um, as Star Trek Discovery had much ire, non-legacy tropes in the writing, he is often not remem remembered for these episodes, but instead um, he's remembered for the teaser lead-up shows you may have seen. He did Strange New Worlds 
short treks. It's hard to say too. No, okay. um, so all those short treks were him as director there, which were magnificent. Some of those short yeah, treks leading I liked up a lot to Strange of New Worlds were magnificent, highly heralded, heralded, and people loved them. And then of course it got Strange New Worlds off the ground. Uh, there were a series of standalone short films featuring characters and storylines from Star Trek Discovery. 2017, he did. Uh, he had credits for uh, an assistant role to production back in 2006 for uh, Smoking Aces. There's no G in that. Smoking Aces with Ryan Reynolds, which was a, a heck of a movie back then. That was 2006. Yeah, it and wasn't I, just Ryan Reynolds. It was sprinkled with oh, a whole bunch of people. Complete ensemble, you know, cast yeah. is huge. Great yeah. movie. Um, kind of gritty, like Pulp Fiction type, type thing. Uh, he was also, I saw him as one of the directors of a TV show I watched called Falling Skies back in 2015. Oh, yeah. Good show. And that was that was pretty good. So the director's yeah. uh, a good director, but you know, that's what so you're working with. It's script. Yeah. But we that, have, that's uh, the first bit. I, I'll I'll let you know about the show in a second. Go ahead. What do you what do you think about him as a director? Well, I mean, obviously we have him uh, a lot of this to, him to blame for a lot of this because well, we know the writing's off, but I'm not sure what's going on uh in the directing part of it too, man. There's some choices definitely that I wouldn't have wouldn't have gone with. So, there is a universal uh, that I think fits here, and that is a cook is only as good as his ingredients and utensils. Agreed. <laughs> sure. Very much yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's not an idiot. He's yeah. a very capable director. I'm not saying that, but yeah. Right. Uh, and I think he's there was probably a bit of a bit and, and brittle on him on yeah. this show. Yeah, no doubt. Blinders and everything. I don't. I don't have much on the show details. I have. I have a bit for the fan service, and I've got a bit for the Easter eggs. But if you want to talk about something specific that happened in the show, um, feel free. It, the, what I have, we'll, we'll save it for the end. Well, I tell you what. The only thing that really got me, man, is at the end oh, when what? when she's doing the little triangle thing or whatever, you know, to uh, to make that thing work, mm -hmm. uh, the device work. She throws out that Illuminati symbol, bro. And I'm like, what the hell? What is she doing? <laughs> because in my mind, right before she threw it out, I was sitting there showing my wife. I was like, it's not, I was like, it's either a square or a diamond. And I was making a diamond shape to my wife, the how I was imagining it in my head. And no sooner was I was sitting there showing that to my wife, then Burnham on TV doing the whole Illuminati thing, you know, that move yeah. right there. Yeah, and uh, I'm like, what? What? Somebody's either playing or straight uh, up, man. <laughs> like we just got flashed some some serious uh, insider stuff right there. Yeah, she's just doing some love for uh, Beyonce's new album, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <man. laughs> Why did he mean that? But, but I, it, it clearly it seemed like she was thinking the same thing I was, and then but it went a totally different route. I mean, all she did was take all the things out and turn them outside and make a triangle i mean it was totally right. opposite of what i thought um but it seemed like she was going down that road and she didn't i don't know if they changed that at the last minute i i suspect they went with a different shape at first i don't know uh, that that whole thing felt pointless to me that, Absolutely. Matter, the whole episode did right the only thing yeah. i wanted was more saru i got that i got the the wedding that was nice whatever um i want to I want to see Saru become more of a folk hero, right? Like this is his uh, genesis of being a, a great diplomat with a, a story of, you know, in, in the way that Indy was a archaeologist, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, I guess there's always a chance we'll see him at the Starfleet show. That's what I hope. No, so even better so. yeah, Just give us a spinoff, say F the Starfleet Academy and let's follow Suru around for a while. If it got rid of Tilly, show, I'd be all for it. This show has a very, well, what I think very few actors are going to move on and they got to stay in this timeline with um, some of the, new, well, that new show that they'll have to stay in the timeline. So I think you'll see some of these people again. I just, I don't know which ones. Nobody's announced anything yet that I've seen. Yeah. I don't know. Is Saru being played by Doug Jones is a factor, right? Like, oh no, I mean, it has to be him, right? I mean, no I mean, he's going to have other projects. Period. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say he's like, like this is definitely the busiest he's been. I mean, if he's because 
if he wasn't doing this, he would only be working for um, Guillermo. I can never say that name. Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Toro. He'd either be working for him or uh, that's it. Or doing no, this show. I mean, honestly, he could pick up any job that you would traditionally cast Andy Circus for and do yeah, he an could. excellent I'm not job saying he will. I'm just saying this is like the busiest he's ever been, and I don't think he's going to be the same busy when this is over unless they book him on that show permanently fingers crossed for you doug jones yeah i like doug jones man i'd like to see him more. i yeah i just don't have high hopes for this this academy show man i so much if they've got if they show comes out with no legacy before it like the legacy star trek legacy show i don't know man because all i hear about is we don't have money for this and that but then if this comes out i'll be like bullshit dude I'm calling bullshit right now. That just proves it's not about the money. Right. I agree. So, Joel. Yes, sir. What you got, buddy? Okay, well, uh, a lot of people had a lot of negative about the show. We're going to see some of the same tropes and some of the same bits and some of the comments. And you'll hear that in my little, I got a two sentence review in the end, but uh, let, let me tell you about the, some of the fan service that's worth the mention. Um, this is a spoiler. If you have not seen the episode, um, now would be the time to step away for a sec. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. So Kovic in the show, he, he actually comes in as crewman Daniels uh, right. and crewman Daniels. First intro was from Star Trek enterprise with Scott Bakula as Jonathan yes. Archer back in 2001 to 2005. Uh, his first appearance, and we're talking about Kovic. No, no I'm sorry, we're talking about Daniels. God, Daniels. that's going to be confusing. First mm-hmm. appearance uh, was on the 11th episode of Star Trek Enterprise. That's called Cold Front. Uh, yes, that it came is. out in November of 2001. Love he it. was born, born in the 31st century. He becomes a temporal agent battling the temporal Cold War, time interference police, more or less, like time cop type thing. Yep. Daniels was killed multiple times in the show and he kept returning over and over and over after the star trek enterprise show was over we don't don't see him reappear until season three of star trek discovery turns out that daniels himself may be the most important person in star trek discovery probably history could be star trek history too you never know i say star trek history it could be he could be one of the most important people we don't know uh and uh certain timeline he's trying to protect of the Starfleet, the Enterprise, and now Discovery are on track because he's got a relaxed relaxed position in this show. In a bit at the end, another little spoiler, there's some Easter eggs. He's sitting at his desk uh, and Easter burning eggs his stuff behind him. Yeah, so on the shelves behind Kovic, we see items from Star Trek's history. We see Chateau Picard wine. We see the visor of Jordy LaForge or Captain Sisko's baseball, which is what we're meant to believe, and more. And uh, if you want to see the show, you can see, you know, you can pause it and go through it all. But that's it. That that's the only bit I've got. But that's the little bit of fan service they tipped their hat to in this one, plus the Easter egg. Uh, and then I've got my review. You want me to spill you my review? Well, you, you know, to, I want to let me uh, talk about riff on this. Well, yeah, because yeah, I I love Enterprise for one thing, and uh, yeah, this is Daniel's. Uh, let's talk about that. He has to be the most important character in Star Trek, and I'll say for this reason because he's going through all through time fixing timelines and all the shows we can assume that right it's not just the ones we've seen we can assume that he's fixing stuff on ds9 in voyager everything's needed a fix at some point we just haven't seen them all and here he is all the way up to the 31st century still doing it you know he's from the 29th century as far as what we knew in enterprise that's why i wanted a 29th century show so bad was because of the stuff we saw from daniels right Um, yeah yeah he was born in the 31st but you're right he went back to the 29th to to help so he's he's actually i think he joined the temporal police in the 31st century and then he's he just started peppering himself across different timelines there's there's multiple versions of him i believe that's why we got killed so many times and came back it's all different timelines yeah, it, it, you know, it's probably a little too loose with time, but it was still cool, man. I mean, like, uh, I liked the nod to it. it. It's it's nice to see them acknowledge their past because this show has been less of that 
you know, like <laughs> right. you talk about, it just doesn't have the, the familiar Star Trek formula to it at all. No transporter chief and, and all that jazz. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, how about, didn't you have a trailer too that you, uh, wanted to show us there? Uh, yeah. Um, we can look at the episode preview if you want. Here we go. I can run it while we're talking. Yeah. I, I can tell you, um, all in all, this show is, uh, it, it's much like the series. It had very little going for it. Uh, and the series is over now. There, there's a lot of wasted storylines for me. The, the characters you don't care that deeply about. The continuity errors are intense. Um, at the end of this particular episode, you're not allowed to really know anything as the viewer at the end. You, they keep things from you. They, they stop you from learning You know what's happening, and I'm not going to spoil that part because if you're going to watch the episode, you, you might as well. And if you watch that whole ending, wow, it, it took a second to get their ending out. Um, yeah, it, 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 it takes a second for the uh, – what I call a wasted opportunity with the progenitor tech, you know, I, I can say that much. I, I can say uh, there's an absolute disregard for the fans outside of the bit I told you about with uh, Daniels. Um, uh, well, I think there's general consensus on those two points, right? Like the yeah, uh, that it took too long getting getting over with, right? Yeah, yeah, a and what the subject material was. So. Yeah, this. Well, this I Go ahead. I was going to say, I got a question for both of you okay. um, regarding the little tidbit at the end that the progenitors found this technology that they are not the all seeing, all knowing we created everything beings we thought they were. Do you guys like that or hate it? Because I don't like they're basically yeah. retconning them in a way, you know? doing something you know something yeah. they've been building since back you know uh way back in deep space nine day or sorry tng days yep you know so how do I, you feel I, about it i agree with brian i think that technically what we've got here is the throwaway this is the yeah. throwaway end script that he said what episode ago two episodes ago i mean i can't remember when he said it but he said it brian was like and i laughed and he laughed and i was thinking they're not gonna do a throwaway at the end of the script and then wow they just i mean really you know yeah. I mean, what was missing was like oh. the cops and like yeah, the fourth wall, the cops, right? and, and i kept thinking <laughs> well yeah if he turns out to be daniels we're gonna get time cops all of a sudden all over the place time cops are gonna come in i mean brian was not far off brian was yeah. so close to having it Would it was like cool if we had that if like at the end time cops just like showed up like oh my god discovery I <laughs> yeah, I mean, you remember we were talking about it, and, and I was saying, man, wouldn't it be so cool? We're going to get Maul back. I mean, not Maul, Locke. We're going to get Locke back. Yeah, we uh, all thought that. Uh, book book is going to get uh, a new planet. With right. Seed and, and we're going to see this, that, and the other. And maybe he did. Maybe we even I saw that we, fucking we, seed. We got a seed shot with the tree. Yeah. And he had a, that, you know, all that stuff. I don't want to spoil it all. But, you know, we got a little bit of it. But I was thinking, well, what, what did you do to Locke? I mean, they just threw away the whole uh, mall and, and lock story. It was just, let me just crumple up the paper and, and hit the bin. You know, I mean, this, well, I, I mean, was like, what it, are you doing? It does go back to something else I said, which was like this great kind of fairy tale sci-fi thing of like, a, apparently he's still in that pattern buffer, right? Yes, he is. And I'm thinking, yeah. uh, okay, maybe they'll find a way to bring him back. Yeah, right? sure. Maybe one day he can unite the brain. Yeah, I mean, just oh. weeks saw stuff, man. But yeah, throwing away an end, an end of the season script like that, man. Yeah. Just horrible stuff. But just, par for the course with those writers, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, lost opportunities galore. Yep, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, they that little bit out. of fan service was the only thing we could really talk about, man, because that was the only, like, oh, cool, you know? That was the only oh, cool moment <laughs> through the whole thing. If they For were like, smart, like everybody involved in the IP would follow through on the fan service, right? Like they had some great ideas here in this series that were fan service that they just kind of like brought up and threw away. Agreed. Yeah, no commitment, man. That, I feel like we're just like a college somewhere a few years ago, just just blanketed all of Hollywood and any or any place where they're doing productions let's say atlanta as well you know like they just putting out all these different bad they just 
flooded the market with bad writers. Yeah. That's, that's the only way I know to put it. Or just they're not even educated. You know, they're just. What if they flooded the market with AI writers who get an AI copy and then the bad writer looks at the AI script and you see that you see the conspiracy theorist hole. Yeah. Here is oh, yeah. Everybody starts with this copy and then they rewrite. You know, how many times do scripts get rewritten? If you don't right. think that's happening in the world. Oh, God. You know, yeah. eh, I need, a, uh, you know, chat GPT. I, I need this to go uh, here and GPT, here. Give me oh, a my Star Trek. And this yeah. Is I mean, this, it, it, this reach is really thin. Yeah. To say that's a conspiracy. You I would love to do that experiment. That? I would love to do that experiment. Like actually have an AI written show and like see, like just give it well, the man, parameters and just see how it, bad man. it would be or how good it might be. I mean, like who knows? I, I, I think I think they are doing it to some extent. I don't think it's I a conspiracy. It. I think they are doing it, and then they edit it, and then sure. they make it whatever they need, and and change. You know, change the name. Get the spark the of an idea. Chat GPT. Forget protecting the innocent. Protecting Chat GPT. Like, how about you just like, okay, Chat GPT. I need you know uh, an idea for a sci-fi you know show or a script, whatever. And they give it a few parameters, and it just spits out an idea, and that's all you needed to get going. Like, I don't. I wouldn't even doubt that that kind of stuff's going on. But then they can get very intricate with it where it's just writing the whole thing too like you're saying and they just edit that right yeah for uh, i got one sentence left it, it's basically uh this series for me as a whole uh should be considered an alternate universe trek i mean it really should because it's in the future anyway and well most of it is oh like we want to do with star wars yeah and call it yes, disney yes. <laughs> i know so this is a I think you know this this series itself if you're gonna sit down and watch it and you're a fan of trek there are it, it does have its moments um and even then i mean some of these episodes on our scale of one to five some of these episodes in this series are three to four at best uh, out of five um expect you you should expect many of these episodes to be ones and twos um as for my personal belief i Outside of that one little bit of fan service, all we get, I'm gonna give it one point for that. We've seen the eye candy. They, you know, we, I'm I'm not giving it any more points. So it, it gives one out of five for me on this one. That that that's all I'm gonna do. And I hate it. I mean, that, I put down here skippable. You could miss yeah. this episode. You could. you could have just listened to the fan service I just gave you and go, oh, okay, I can scrub to that. You know, let me just uh, hit hit that up and see what that looked like. I mean, it watched, would be over. Likewise, watch the first half of this. And gotten, yeah, you know, the end of the story, right? That they threw away. Yeah, which is yeah. why I'm saying it's skippable. But which you said first. I didn't say it first. You said it first a couple episodes ago. Well, what do you think, Brian? What's your star rating? Uh, I, I'm largely in agreement with Joel here. I, I would say this, uh, you know, gets a star, maybe a star and a half, just because, you know, I got to see it end. <laughs> Um, uh, this, uh, there, there is another show that's kind of similar and it's strange new worlds just because of where it's at. This does not have the bingeable rewatchability that TOS, TNG, DS9, Voyager, all the enterprise, all these other series had where you can go back, rewatch it years later and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely one and done for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I, um, I, again, I too will go with one star. And for me, it's, you know, I have no love for most of these characters. And so I'm no connection and no love lost. So it, again, you couldn't have, you didn't have to watch the episode. It really didn't matter. And because I think many people don't connect with these characters, Many people are going to get that same feeling, like, eh, whatever, it's over, good, you know. Let's go. Let's have, let's have some more strange new worlds because that's that's fun. Let's that's let's great. finally have some legacy because that's fun. Let's let's see this Picard movie. They did great with Picard, at least there at the end for sure. Let's bring Terry Metalis back to write this Picard movie. You know, let's, let's just fucking give Terry Metalis a job back and you know Paramount to handle all of Star Trek. You know, he should 
be the Filoni of Star Trek. And now I can't even say that anymore because Filoni's a traitor. And we'll talk about that soon, guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, like he should be the guy, Terry Metalis. But you never know, man. When you put things, in, uh, you know, you, you get these guys and you think they're all great. And for a while they are. And then something happens. Something happens to them, man. They start believing the hype, I guess. I don't know. Well, I, I personally consider it uh, more of a thing like as these uh, producers, directors, people who are involved get more and more uh, clout. Um, like Filoni, right? He was a storyboard artist. I, I don't know how much history he had before that of being involved in show running and things like that. I'm sure that, you know, as he stepped up to these plates, there were a lot of people around him to, to help him along the way. Right. And I think that's just what happened. Like maybe, um, you know, you're just trying to work. Right. And uh, at the end of the day, you're working with who you're working with. Yeah, perhaps. But anyway, I, for one, am absolutely excited that this is over. I'm glad this series is over. Like Brian said, we'll get our Mondays and Tuesdays back or something like that. Uh, now it'll just shift to Wednesdays or some stupid that. So, you know, if we do Acolyte, we're still talking about whether or not we're going to do Acolyte, man. It's up in the air because nobody knows what Acolyte's going to be like. We'll find out right. tomorrow, so hopefully we'll know better. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this long trek through Discovery. And uh, you have, we'll see you soon on Friday for the, uh, well, it's Saturday to you, for the uh, regular podcast. And we'll be talking about Acolyte and all the goodness that comes with it or badness, whatever it may be. Uh, so, yeah, as remember, as always, as remember, what the fuck? <laughs> remember, as <I> always, remember. <laughs> be excellent to each other. And Brian, Joel, and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Peace one, out, everybody. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna start retconning everybody again. <laughs>